this is the next video and this video is about the application of Gauss law to find out the electric field intensity which is given by the equation E due to a point charge located at origin on a point P. So the equation of the electric field intensity is equal to K Q divided by R square and in the direction of the vector R and what we found out uh, from Gauss law this is the first equation which I will get the Gauss law from what we have found out from my Gauss law was that my total flux is equal to Q enclosed so I got the equation of the electric flux density D which I got as integration of D surface integration of D dot DS will give me what is known as my flux and this will give my total charge enclosed equal to Q and D is equal to the electric electric flux density which can be given in coulomb per meter square and the electric field intensity could be given in my coulomb or uh, newton per meter coulomb so this was my units and now next is suppose I am having a charge distribution which is given by x y and z and if this charge is making an angle this charge is located at a point P so I'll assume a Gaussian surface which is a sphere but it is not possible to show it in it here so this is a Gaussian surface so when you are solving any problem you will have to first assume a Gaussian surface so so the my charge Q is located here so this is a or Q1 is located here which is a point charge so I will have to find the electric field intensity at a point P which is located along the boundary of the Gaussian surface which is a sphere so this is how my arrangement will look like so I am considering to a spherical coordinate system spherical coordinate to solve this problem quickly while it can be solved both in Cartesian coordinate and cylindrical coordinate if you are considering but considering the symmetry of the problem like it will be easy to solve it using the spherical coordinate system so this is my sphere of radius R and the point is located at a point P and this is my cone which is making an angle theta with the Z axis and this is my plane which is making angle Phi so what I will need to consider is that I will need to consider my D which is electric flux density so to find my charge I will need to use this equation which is D is equal to epsilon naught E so my aim is to find my E so I will need to find my D first base, based on the Gauss law so based on the Gauss law how I can find my D is using my second equation and if I say this is my third equation so the first step would be to say that my D is equal to D rho A rho so this is the first step and if I say this is my fourth equation I have found what my D is and my Q is equal to integration of D DS which is already P 
which I can find from that. And my DS in case of my spherical coordinate will be made up of two surfaces. So one surface will be, if I say one surface which is coming from here is R D theta, then the other surface will be R sine theta. R sine theta. So if I'm considering two planes, so since there will be one axis will be Z, the other will be going in this direction will be the R and the one which is going in this direction will be uh, uh, perpendicular will be theta. So based on that I can find my infinitely small surface area ds is equal to r uh, r square sine theta d theta. So if I'm applying that same thing here what I will get is if I'm, if I'm integrating this phi is equal to 0 to 2 pi and my phi will vary from 0 to 2 pi and my theta will vary from 0 to pi that is 180 degrees and my ds is equal to d rho uh, my r square sine theta d theta d phi. So when I am integrating this I will find my ds as 4 pi r square. which is based on my Q is equal to D into integration of DS. So this is equal to D into R square sine theta D theta D phi. So what I got is Q is equal to D into 4 pi R square and the direction is given by a AR vector. So my D is equal to Q upon 4 pi R square into AR. So the direction of the Q will be in the direction, direction of D will be in the direction of R. So it is in the AR direction. As I can see here, I have taken the rho here, but it is a R in this case, which is a radius which I am considering. So the finally, what you can say from the equation 3 which we have is Q upon 4 pi epsilon or 4 pi R square AR is equal to epsilon naught e. So my e will be equal to so my e will be equal to if I'm taking this epsilon down then my e will be equal to q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r square into ar. So if you look into this equation which is my answer for solving this and if you look into the first equation based on the Coulomb's law which we have got. So both are almost same. So it is possible to get the same solution using a symmetrical surface or considering the application of Gauss law. This was for point considering a point charge.